Okay, so what we've got with the remaining part of this topic is boundary conditions. What you'll have noticed so far with all of the questions that you've been doing is that they always end up with the a e to the x or b e to the minus x or you might have the p sine of 4x plus q and we're always going to have some of those unknowns. So the final stage of this topic is to just get rid of those constants that we have at the beginning and it's going to be pretty obvious what we need to do to get rid of these, um, to get rid of these things. Um, usually though when we try and get rid of some of the, um, the constants that we don't know about we normally just get told about like x and y but you'll notice here in this first example that we've got um, that we also get told uh, where am I looking for? We also get told what dy by dx is, as well as y and as well as x. So that's going to give us a bit of a clue of what we need to be able to do here in this kind of question to find these boundary conditions. So here it says, find y in terms of x, given that the second derivative of y with respect to x minus y equals 2e to the x, and this is uh, equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and x is equal to 0. Now, to save us some time, I've already said what the general solution is that we've got here. Um, but it's going to be pretty obvious why that's the general solution, because you can see that this part here, the e to the x and e to the minus x, what does that tell me about the auxiliary equation? Yeah, it's just an m squared minus 1, so m is plus and minus 1, hence the x and the minus x that you've got there. And then we've got an x e to the x. Why does it look like we've got an x e to the x for the particular integral here? Good. We've yeah. already got an e to the x in the complementary function, which is why the particular integral is going to have to have that extra little x that goes with it. Obviously, when it's been done with lambda in the front and it's gone through the machine, it's turned out that lambda is equal to 1. Okay. So what we're going to do for this one that we've got here, we don't need to do any more solving. We just need to use these three pieces of information that we've got to be able to just finish the question off. To be honest, you could probably do this already. So I'm going to just substitute in that y is equal to 0 and x is equal to 0. So I get 0 equals, well, anything with e to the power of 0 is just going to be 1. So you just get a plus b plus 0. zero okay? So if you only were given the x and y coordinate, you don't have enough information to find out what both of those things are. So the trick of the, what, what you need to do because of this piece of information is we also need to differentiate the general solution so that we can use that additional piece of information. So if I were to differentiate this, I would get dy by dx is equal to, what does this differentiate to? Oh. a to the x. Minus b to the x. Yep. plus x e to the x. Okay, so you differentiate it, and then you're just going to substitute in the other, condition, the other things we've been given. So we now know that dy dx is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. Dx, um, minus b to the minus x. Very yeah. good. So we get 0 equals, and it's really easy with e to the x, you just get a minus b plus 1 plus 0. So you can either use this first one here, or you could use your graphics calculators to solve the simultaneous equations. Pretty, these are pretty easy ones to solve, though. I would probably rearrange this one and see that b equals a plus 1. So using that and substituting back in here, we were solving this simultaneous and this one. We can just see 0 equals a plus a plus 1. So a is equal to minus a half which means that b is equal to positive a half. So our final so our solution, not our general solution, but our solution, because it's no longer general, it is the particular solution of this equation, is y equals minus a half e to the x plus a half e to the minus x plus x e to the x. And that's it. OK? So I'm just going to do one more example, and then we're going to do practice for the first half, and then we'll move on to how we actually use this. This is a bit more like what it gets used like in exam questions and stuff as well. But this is all the skills that we need for this topic. Um, so in a, as an exam question, would it be like the whole question as a chunk? So find the general solution and then find the particular solution? Yeah, it, it, it will often have like a, a worded context part at the beginning. 
it will ask you to show that the differential equation is linked to that worded situation, and then it will just ask you to solve it. But instead of it just all being random numbers, it might be about like medicine in a bloodstream. So it would say the amount of medicine at the start of the trial, and you have to extract the information. What were you going to say, Nahid? Uh, so it gives us those three. Yeah, it will give you those three pieces of information. If you can't find those three pieces of information, and you're not looking hard enough, OK? But you'll see that as soon as you see a modeling question you will see something where it will say like, at the start of the blood trial, and you're like, oh cool, t equals zero, and then it will tell you what all of the things are, okay? So I'm gonna go on to the next one, and then we'll just finish up. So we've got an exam question that we've got here. Um, we've actually already done this previous part of the question, so all we're going to need to do now is, uh, 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 what am I gonna talk about? We've already solved this one. I think this was on a, a couple of earlier pages that we did this part. And the general solution that we came up with was y equals a cos 5x plus b sine 5x plus 3 tenths x sine 5x. So if we're just going to do that last bit of actually um, finding the particular solution for this differential equation. And it wants it in the form y equals. So that's fine because it's already got y equals. So we have x0, y0, dy dx is 5. I usually, if I've got that y is a cos 5x, plus b sine 5x, plus 3 tenths x sine 5x. Usually what I like to do is just to differentiate it straight away, because I know I'm going to need to use it. And then I can do the substituting in. But whatever you want to do, really. So let's just think how this differentiates. How does this whole thing differentiate? Uh, 5a cos sine 5x? Minus, minus, five minus 5a sine 5x. Good. <coughs> what was that? Sorry, plus plus three over ten sine five x. Plus three over ten sine five x. Plus three over two x cos five x. Okay. So now what we should do is we should find out what are the. Um, the two the equations that link with it that we're going to do simultaneous <laughs> equations with. So we know that y equals 0 when x equals 0. So you should, this is why you need to know your causes and signs really, really quickly, OK? So from this first one, we know that we have 0 equals what's, a. this would just be a. Uh, b disappears. B disappears, and that also, that also disappears, doesn't it? So you just get from the first one that a is equal to 0. So technically now, we know that that one isn't even there, OK, because okay, we've got that a is 0 from that first one. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't have differentiated it first, but we did. So from that first one, we just get that a is equal to 0. Now for the second one, we know that dy by dx is equal to 5. So you get 5 equals, well, this whole thing is 0. This whole thing is 5b. And this whole thing is 0. This whole thing is 0. So you just get that b is equal to 1. Now, they're not normally as simple as this. They're normally going to be simultaneous equations, OK? It just happens in this one that lots of the things drop out. So the answer is that y is equal to <coughs> a was 0, so we just get sine 5x plus 3 tenths x sine 5x. So if we wanted to, we could take a factor of this out. So that's sine 5x 1 plus 3 tenths x. And then part d wants us to sketch this. No well, you can use your calculators for this, OK? How would you do this non-calculator? Non so what I would do for this, and I will still check this with a calculator afterwards, is I think, OK, well, first of all, I know it's something to do with it's a sine graph, right? But the sine graph is being multiplied by something that is linear. So I'm going to do a much simpler version of this to begin with, and then we can extend the idea. So if we were going to draw, let's just draw y equals x sine x. Well, I know it's going to be, whenever it's 1, it's going to be multiplied by x as well. So it's going to have something to do with the graph y equals x, because whenever I get to the peak of the sine graph, it will just be being multiplied by the x coordinate that it has. And whenever I get to the negative peak of the sine graph, it will be multiplied by 
x as well. Yep, it's always in this will be in radians. So the graph will look like a sine curve that goes like, that like matches with the x and minus x like this. This hasn't been drawn like super well. So that's what x sine x would look like. No, it's just I've seen this before. I would, I would not never, be able to. Go I swear, that. I would have just looked at that and be like, I'm going to shoot exactly up that. So, like, well, if you think about how the x graph behaves, and so those asymptotes, so the, if you think the x graph is behaving, like, this is the, that's your y equals x, right? Do you know what's annoying though? It makes sense. It, it does makes, make sense, makes right? Sense. Because as you get further along, every time you've got a peak where the sine graph is it's one, it's been, been multiplied by whatever its x value is. And the next time you get to a peak, it's been multiplied by whatever that x value is. And then it's the same thing for the negative values that you've got as well. So it does the same thing, I should imagine. I still would check it on my calculator. This isn't like my best area of maths, OK? So it looks like it's going to be sine 5x multiplied by this linear graph. So we'd want to see what that positive linear graph looks like. And then we'd also want to see what the negative linear graph looks like. Because here we had y equals x and we had y equals minus x. So for this one, let's just get rid of that. Looks like, well, we'd have 1 plus 3 tenths x. What does 1 plus 3 tenths x look like roughly as a graph? It's a straight line. So it's kind of crossing it like here. <coughs> and it only wants it drawn between 0 and pi. And then we also know that the negative peaks are going to be crossing at minus 1 and going a negative gradient, so like so this. And it will do the same pattern. Now it's a sine graph, and it's got a 5x. So what's happened to the 5x? What's that going to do? Upwards, nope. Upwards. It's inside the. Oh, so it doesn't normally. It's, it's a compression. Yeah, we're doing f of five x. So it's going to. So it's going to be a compression. Now, what does the sine graph normally do between zero and pi? Uh, one from. It does no between zero and pi. It does this. So we're going to have. Oh. We're going to have one, two, three, four. Five. We'll have five of the bumps. Okay. So starting from here, it will go. That's. One, two, three, four, five. Where these, this asymptote that we have here is y equals one plus three tenths x, and this one is y equals minus one minus three tenths x. It's not an asymptote. It's just normally when you think of a sine graph, which looks like this. Would it be more tangential? Because like, it touches the peaks, no? It does touch it. It's not an asymptote, really. It's just I'm saying the peaks here are at the line y oh. equals 1 and the line y equals minus 1. So what we're thinking about how it like behaves, if you're multiplying it by 1 plus 3 tenths x, then it's going to stretch up so that it's going along in that kind of line like that. Yep. No, you've got Miss Chalmers now, and then I'll see you after school, OK? So that is what the graph, I mean, this is not very well drawn. Um, should we, have you tried it on your graphics calculators? Does it look like this? Yeah, and you could just do it in the graphics calculator. But I just wanted to show you like why it's true and like how you think about it anyway. So what you can do is we're going to just do for, I don't know, 20 minutes, exercise 7D. Just the odd questions. It's the same stuff you've been doing before, apart from we're now just going to add in some boundary conditions as well. Okay?